Welcome to this webinar. My name is Dr. Philip Edu. I'm here with my wife, Dr. Monique Edu. She will be helping us with the questions. During my presentation, if you have any questions, you can just type them in the chat box. And also after my presentation, you know, you can be able to ask me questions and I'll be happy to address them for you. So we are here to make sure that you know the information that we're going to present will be meaningful to you. So as you can see on the slide, making sense of unstructured big qualitative data using chat GPT and in vivo. I'm going to talk about qualitative analysis, big qualitative data, web scraping tools, and also making sense of your big qualitative data. And we're going to also do some kind of application. So we're going to use a case study looking at the features of a business model used by Mr. Beast. And I'm going to give you a brief information about that when we reach there. So these are the things that we're going to talk about. So what is qualitative analysis? So qualitative analysis is all about data reduction. So what you are doing is that you are trying as much as possible to reduce the data. You are going through the data and extracting information that you think is going to help you to address your research question. And then what you do is you develop themes and then use them to address your research question. And this process should be systematic. So you have to go step by step so that you know, people will believe what you found. You are summarizing the information that you have extracted from participant or extracted from somewhere to help you to address your research question. So this is all about qualitative analysis. Because of social media and people access to the internet, we are producing a lot of information. Some of them could be very useful for us. We are producing about 1.1 trillion megabytes of data every day. And I think it's going to be more than this because of also artificial intelligence. We and AI, we are all producing data, right? So as we are producing the data, we as researchers, we have to think about, okay, how can we assess those data and also analyze them and use it to understand the phenomenon that we are focusing on? So that is the issue of big data is so big that sometimes it's humanly impossible for us to analyze. So what we can do is to think about, okay, you want to collect data that is rich for you to use it to address your research question. Two main factors affecting the richness of information that you're going to collect from participants or extract from somewhere, time and resources. You may not have had enough time to assess all these huge amount of data that might be online that you think is going to help you to address your research question. And also resources, you may not have enough people to help you to address or help you to access that information and analyze it and address your research question. So as qualitative researchers, what should we do? And this is where technology comes in, right? We have to take advantage of existing technology to help us to assess information and analyze it. In terms of information online, we look at all the information as document, and you can assess the document and analyze it and use it to address your research question. But as I said, because of limited time and resources, what should we do? We could use web scraping tools, right? to help us to extract information to address our research question. And some of them, you know, when you click on this link, when you get access to my PowerPoint slide, and you click on this link, you'll be able to get information about different types of tools that you can use to extract data online. And the, one of them is Archiva. This software can help you to extract information from Twitter. And then the last one that I will be using for this presentation is Encapture. You can extract any information from the website as a PDF. You can extract a video from YouTube. You can extract people's post from Twitter. You can extract information from Facebook. How do you make sense of data? So there are three main steps that you have to follow to help you to make sense of data. First of all, you have to extract the data because it's a huge amount of data and you cannot manually go and look for the data and print them out and manually analyze. You can use a software as called Encapture for you to 
extract the information that you need from any website that you want. After extracting the data, you could also think about, okay, the data might be so huge that it's humanly impossible for you to analyze. So what do you have to do? There's also another app called YouTube Summary with ChatGPT that you could be able to extract a transcript from YouTube and then the system can help you to summarize the transcripts before you do the analysis. The last stage is the data analysis where you can also use a software called InVivo. InVivo is a qualitative software where you can upload all your transcript or your qualitative data and then make sense of it, code them, develop themes, and use the themes to address your research question. So these are the three steps that you can follow when you are working with big data. And these are the software and applications that you could use to help you to make sense of your data. Let's start with Encaptcha. When you go to Google and you type Encaptcha, it will give you access to the software where you can download and then put it as an extension on Google Chrome. So I will show you how to do it. But what I want to let you know is that when you get access to this software, you'll be able to go to any website and then download any information that you want that you think can help you to address your research question that you have. So that's the data extraction. So what you have to do is first you go to the place where you have to download the extension. So you open and capture is a way of downloading information from online, but that information can be used only when you have in vivo software. So I'm going to go through the process for you, but I just want you to know that this is compatible with only in vivo software, the software that you use to analyze your qualitative data. What you have to do is you have to go to Google Chrome and then download this information as an extension. When you open Google Chrome here, I've already downloaded it. You see the little icon here in capture. That is the extension that you have to download on your Google Chrome as an extension so that you'll be able to use it. This is all about the download. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to also show you how to download information from there. I just want to show you the application first before we go into the practical things, right? So when you download that extension, and then let's say you want to download information from YouTube, you can just click on that icon and then click on video only. Or if you want to download video and comment, you can click on video and comment, and then you click on capture so that it download that information. If you don't need comment for you to analyze, you don't have to do that because it takes more time. It takes a lot of time for the system to download all the comments. So if you want only the video, you just go ahead and download the video only, and then click on capture, and then it will tell you when it's finished downloading, when you go to show capture progress page, but I will show you later. I just want to make sure that you know that the software that I'm going to use or the app. The second app that I will want to show you is the YouTube summary with ChatGPT. So it's also a Google Chrome extension. You have to download the app on your Google Chrome web browser. So as you can see here, I've already done that. And you can see it's a little icon here. You have to have an account with ChatGPT. So what this system does is it extract all the transcript for YouTube video. And then when you click on ChatGPT here, this icon, it will send all the transcript into ChatGPT and then it will summarize that information for you. And as I said, I'm going to show you how to do it. I just want you to show you all the apps that I'm going to use. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now, in terms of data management, so what you're doing is that you are using this app to help you to summarize the data before you do the analysis, because the information might be so huge and you don't have time and resources to go through everything. So that's why you have to do the summary first. You have a lot of options in terms of different languages. You can change it to the language that you prefer before you send it to chat GPT. So the next one that I want to show you is the qualitative data analysis software called InVivo. 
it's a software that you can use to analyze your qualitative data. So what you do is that you upload all the data into the system and then you start a coding process. You review all the information there, you go through and select the ones that you think is significant to address your research question. And then you have to create codes under a specific research question. So you create codes and then categorize the code to develop themes and then use the themes to address your research question. You know, if you can analyze the data yourself, you don't have to use chat GPT. We only use it if you have a huge amount of data that you cannot humanly analyze. Then you can think about chat GPT using it to summarize your data. I always encourage you to explore existing software. The reason being that we cannot run away from these softwares. They are there to make our work easy. So as researchers, you have to make sure that you are aware of the software and explore and look at the positive side and the negative side of it. Any tool that you use, you have to be aware of the strengths and weaknesses. No methodology has only strength. So you just have to be aware and look at the strength. What is the strength of summarizing your data before you analyze it? What is the weakness of doing that? The weakness might be that you may lose some significant information because it might not capture that in the summary, right? So you be aware of these and try them. One way is to do some kind of quality assurance by using ChatGPT to summarize it and also summarize it yourself and compare the summary, right? Is your summary similar to what ChatGPT gave you? If it's similar, then you can use it. So you just have to try it out and see what you're going to get. So it all depends on the amount of data. If you can justify that, you don't have enough time to go through all these kind of data, then you can use ChatGP to help you to analyze. And also, I think that you also have to be transparent. You have to let your audience know that you use it in some ways to help in transparency process. Do you have enough time to make sense of the data? Do you have enough resources to make sense of the data? If you don't have time and resources, then there is a software around that you could use to help you to make sense of your data. Yes, you can use that, right? But you just have to be transparent. Let people know why you use it and what is the benefit of using it. Mr. Beast is a YouTuber. He's 24 years. He has been creating videos for 10 years. And now he has about 130 million subscribers for only his one channel. When you combine all his channel, it's getting closer to 400 million subscribers. Imagine you have been asked to come up with information about how he carry out his business in terms of what kind of strategies did he use to get over 130 million subscribers for only one channel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a short video about what he does. It's, it's just about a minute, just to give you a background information. And then we move ahead and see how we can apply all the software that I've shown you, how we can use it to do this research, learning about his work, his business, and then his business model. So let me show you a short video and then we can move ahead that I just came up in a rich household. I get called that a lot. In reality, my mom was in the military. She was a single mom and she worked a lot. And what's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? I basically did YouTube videos for years without making any money. When I first started, the videos were horrible and they slowly got less and less horrible throughout the years. Even then, when I was making money the first few years, it was not you know, scraps. It grind and it grind and it grind year after year after year after year. It definitely does hit you, but I had more reasons than just wanting to be famous or just wanting money. Anything you can fit in this mysterious circle, we'll pay for it. Thank you so much. Oh, that's wow. awesome. We ain't never had nobody bless us like this. As selfish as it sounds, I like helping people because it just makes me happy. I like seeing their faces light up. I like seeing how excited they get. Nothing is more entertaining than just seeing someone just go from like having a rough day to just going like, what? Genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. Aww. It's just what I love. It literally is what makes me happy. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Now that you know you have a brief information about what he does, 
You know, technically it does videos to entertain people at the same time using the the resources, all the money that he gets to help people. So it's like getting money out of all these videos, helping people and video taping them about their reaction to the help and also doing videos for people to be entertained. That might have caused him to get a lot of subscribers and a lot of viewers, right? So let's say you are doing a case study. The purpose of this study is to explore strategies Mr. Beast used to obtain over 130 million subscribers. In addition, the study will examine features of Mr. B's business model. So based on this purpose of the study, you have two research questions. So the two research questions are, what strategies did Mr. B use to amass over 130 million YouTube subscribers? The second one is, what are the characteristics of Mr. B's business model? So these are the two research questions that you have to address. Look at these steps that we're going to follow to help us to address your research question. So the first step that you have to think about is you have to determine the source of your data. Where are you going to get data to address your research question that you have? And then you have to engage in data extraction. You have to extract data from somewhere, maybe talking to people or go to online, gather information to help you to address your research question. The next one to manage the data. You know, maybe it might be large amount of data. How do you manage it so that you'll be able to make it ready for you to analyze? The last part one will be analyzing the summary of the data. And the last one will be addressing your research question. So these are the steps that you have to follow if you have been given this kind of task. So let me ask you, and there's no right or wrong answer. I just want to make sure that you understand the process, right? So based on these two questions, what will be your data source? What are some of the sources of data? Where do you want to get information to help you to address your research question? Uh, his past YouTube videos. Yes, yes. YouTube videos will be helpful. Okay, blogs about him. That will be also helpful too. Articles about him, right? That can be also helpful. Oh, documentary of his journey. Yes, perfect. So you see how based on your research question, you have to list all the potential source of your data and it's limitless you know the reason why because at first you may have to go and look for mr beast and talk to mr beast but now there's so much information online that you can access and address the question so you don't have to even talk to the person so you see how now information is so available easily that it's, it's so easy to do research now. Let's look at the things that I put here. I think you have already talked about them. I think the first option is to look for Mr. Beast and talk to him. But think about it. You have to go back to the principle, time, resources. Do you have time to look for him? He might not be available. Do you have resources? If he says, I come right now to North Carolina, where he's located for you to interview, do you have time to pack everything and go and interview him? Do you have resources to do that, right? So first of all, you have to list the data sources, right? And you think about, okay, based on my time and resources, what can I do to assess, right? Yes, the best way is to talk to the person to get all the information that you need. But do you have time? Do you have resources? Did you, will the person be available? Maybe you talk to the people who are close to Mr. Beast. Would they be available for you to do that? What about videos? Yes, it would be great, right? You can go to YouTube. He has been interviewed by a lot of people. So you can get access to those videos and analyze, right? You can go to his channel and look at some of the videos and see which one will be the best for you to analyze. You can also go to Twitter and then hashtag Mr. Beast. Maybe you can get some information from there. You can go to Facebook. So these are all the ways of getting access to information to help you to address your research question. Back again, your time and resources. Do you have time and resources? So looking at the time and resources, if I am doing this research, I will look at the interviews, right? He has granted a lot of interviews to people and then it has been recorded and you can go to YouTube and get access to those interviews and look at it and get all the information that you need to address your research question. So that's the option that I would take based on my time and resources. What kind of technology can I use to extract this information? And this is where it goes back to and capture. So 
Let's go to Google Chrome. So as you can see here, I have already downloaded the extension here. So what I will do is that I will just click on that and it gives you options. So first you have to get access to the video. So one of the videos that I'm going to use is the origin and the rise of Mr. Beast, the full documentary. Another thing that you have to think about it is that the same way when you are looking for participants, you have inclusion criteria, right? You have a list of things that participant has to qualify to be part of your study. The same thing as when you are looking for data, you have to have some kind of conditions. What are the conditions should the data meet for it to be part of your study? One of the conditions is that maybe the data should be about interviewing Mr. Beast. So any video that focus on interviewing him, I will select that data and then see whether I can get something from it. So when you click on this one, you have options. You can download the video only. You can download the video with comment. If the comments are not going to help you to address your research question, you don't have to click on this because it takes a long time for download everything. And you can also download PDF, right, in the form of PDF. This one, the PDF might not be necessary because it will not capture the video. It just capture what you see on the screen. What I do is I click on this one and I go to capture. So when you go to capture, it will download that information. So you see how it's scanning and trying to download. So I think it has finished downloading. You go to show capture progress page and you can see here that it says that the download is complete. So now the information is ready for us to use it, right? And when we go to in vivo, you're going to do the same thing for other videos. So you go to the, the second video, you just search for the video and then so let's say I want to look for another video. I go to Mr. Beast interviews, and then maybe I'm interested in this one, right? So I click on that. I go here and then click on capture. When you go to the progress, it will show you whether it's finished. So you have two videos to work on. Decide a couple of videos that you want to focus on. The most important is to ask yourself, do you think there's some information there that will help you to address your research question, right? Sometimes you have to listen to the video and see before you decide. So imagine that, yes, you have fed the videos that you want. You have to open in vivo. When you open a new project, and then you can say, you know, can type anything. I will just type new project about Mr. Beast. And then you click on next. And then I'm just telling the system to auto save and you click on create project. So it will open a project for you. As you can see here, let me close this one. So now what we have to do is import the videos that we have downloaded. So you go to import and you see here in capture, you click on that and then you browse when you go to downloads that information will be there so you click on download and click on okay what you have gotten from in capture will be here so you choose the one that you want i choose the first two right that i want and then click on import when you do that what will happen is that it will import that information into in vivo you can open one of them by double clicking so let me open the second one. So now you have that information here, right? It will take some time, but let me see what I can. And some of my videos. Yes. Given away over a million. You have that information here. Another thing that you have to think about is, can you bring the transcript here in case you want to bring the transcript here to also analyze, right? You can, yes, you can analyze the videos by selecting and then developing codes here but it's also going to be useful for you to have the content here, right? So that you can use, look at the transcript, right? So what you have to do is that you go back to the video. In this case, I will just open any browser other than the Google Chrome, and I will show you the reason why later. You see here, I've opened a different browser. Let me go here. Okay, so this is the video that we are looking at, right? So when you go to the YouTube and you go here, the, the three dot here, show transcript, 
it will show the transcript here, right? So what you have to do is to select all the transcript. Some of the videos might not have transcript, but now most of the videos that you see on YouTube will have transcript. So you select. So you see how I'm selecting that with the all the numbers there. You right click there and click on copy. And what you have to do is open a Word document. What you have to do is, I'm bringing the Word document here from my other page, and then copy and paste. It has pasted something here that you just have to remove. Some of the information are not important. So you just have to take them out. You just want the transcript. So you see how I have 27 pages of transcript, right? here and you can give it a title or you can leave it alone you save it on your computer right you can save it with a different name any name that you want you can be say mr b's interview or you can save it based on the title of the video so i can just copy this one remember the reason why i'm doing this is i want to bring the transcript into in vivo so that you'll be able to analyze the transcript as you are listening to the video right so then you save it, right? Imagine we have already saved it. So you go back to in vivo, and then what you're gonna do is that you click on edit, and then you see the download import icon here, you click on that, and then you browse to look for the document that we saved. I save it as Mr. Beast origin. So you click on that and open, and then you go here and check timestamp. It will preview it for you to see how it looks like. And then you click on OK. It will take a few minutes, maybe a minute or so, for everything to be on the right side so that you can start the coding process, right? So instead of coding the video, you can code the transcript at the same time listening to the video. I think the best practice is to code the transcript. So you have the transcript here on the right side, and you can do the coding process. If you don't need this one, this one is just a title. You can just right click on it and then delete that part so that it's only the transcript that will be showing, right? So you see everything will be shown here and then you can start the coding process. So you see how I've shown you how to extract information from the YouTube video and then import it and then you can bring the transcript, right? Uh, so remember here that this means that you're going to analyze 27 pages of transcript of one video, right? This video is, the second video is even more because it was two hours interview, right? So you have to think about, okay, imagine you have 10 videos about Mr. Beast and you want to analyze to address your research question. And each of the videos you have about, maybe 27 pages of transcript, right? Or maybe 30 pages of transcript or 50 pages of transcript. Do you have time to do that, right? You may not have time. And this is where the second app comes in, right? I'm going to show you where ChatGPT comes in and said, okay, can I send the transcript to ChatGPT for it to summarize it for me and then I can focus on analyzing the summary. The best way is to analyze it when you have your transcript here. But remember that you may have a lot of data, a huge amount of data. Imagine, as I said, you have about 20 videos to review. You may not have time to do that, but there's a help here, right? That I'm going to show you. This is where ChatGPT comes in. So you go back to Google Chrome, and then you see here, I have the, what I'm going to use to summarize my transcript, which is called YouTube Summary with ChatGPT. When you download it as an extension, you click on it, this is what you're going to see, the setting. When you scroll down, you see here, this is the prompt that you can use to prompt the system, ChatGPT, and say that, okay, Looking at this transcript, can you summarize the following? You, are, you just ask a simple question. So here, you can just type here, summarize the following. This information is a prompt that will ask ChatGPT to summarize the transcript. You have to make a simple statement so that ChatGPT will understand. 
if that information is not there, when you download, you just type here, summarize the following, and then you'll be done. So now that you know we have set up the setting, everything, we go back to the video. So let's go back to the video. So let's go back to the first video that we were looking at. And some of my videos. So now, because I have this app here, or this extension, you will see here, transcript and summary, right? So you click on that and it will show the transcript here. It looks very different when you open it in the, the one that I, I showed you here, the transcript that you have here. If you don't have the, the extension, right? This is how you see your transcript. This is how you will see your transcript. But if you are using the extension, this is how you're going to see your transcript. The, the system has arranged the tra transcript in such a way that it will be easy for ChatGPT to make sense of it. So what you have to do is that when you go here, you just click on view AI summary. But before you do that, you have to make sure that you have logged on or you have opened your ChatGPT account so that the system will transfer all the information here. So let's go back to the video. So I will click on this place and remember this prompt. So when you send it that it will prompt the system that summarize the following. So it will summarize it. So let me go back and click on this one and see what it will do. Login has expired. So I have to log in again. So let me put in my login information and then I will be right back with you. So let me do it again. Go here. Click on this icon. So you see how the system has transferred the transcript. The, you know, the good thing about this system is that the app is that it's arranged the transcript in a very nice way so that the system can understand. Let me go up. So these are the transcripts, right? So the system said summarize the following. And then look at the summary. It's just a paragraph, right? But the problem about this one is that it has taken out maybe some of the major things that it will help you to analyze your data. So I will call this the overarching summary or executive summary, right? So what you have to do is that you are going to tell the system again, let me show you the PowerPoint because you want the system to give you, to expand the summary a little bit because this summary is too small. So let me show you what you're going to do. Looking at this PowerPoint here, now we have the summary here, I summarize the following. Now what you're gonna tell the system is continue with thousand words of summary. So the initial prompt will give you this one, but we're gonna say that continue with thousand words of summary, of summary. And then you click here or you click enter. So what a system will do is that it will give you an extended form of a summary. So you see how the system is breaking things out. The good thing about the second part is that it will give you some examples that will help you to, you know, when you are coding, you can see some examples based on the main points that it is bringing out and it's breaking down into various paragraphs. You see how powerful this software is. If you listen to the video and see this summary, it's, it's just perfect. But I always tell people, you have to be transparent. Tell people that you use it. It's not like you secretly use it and then you tell people that it's your product. It's not ethical for you to do that. So you see how the system is summarizing. It will be close to a thousand words of, remember it was about 27 pages. Now it's about one and a half pages. So when you finish that, you just copy and paste it on a Word document. Let me show you what my Word document looks like after I've copied and pasted it. Let me open this one for you. So you see here, the overarching summary, the first one that was summarized, I have it here. And then the main summary, I have them here. So you see, this is the data. You see how it was about 27 pages. Now you have about two pages, right? Now you are analyzing two pages. It has extracted all the main information for you to analyze, develop themes to address your research question that you have, right? So you do the same thing for all of the videos 
that you want to analyze. You have the, the system will generate first one for you, the one that summarizes, and then you give another prompt say, saying that continue with thousand words of summary. You can say 500 words of summary if you want it to be shot out. But I like thousand words because it gives you not only the main point, but it gives you examples, right? That you can use to help you to make sense of your data or to develop teams to address your research question. Now that you, you have this document, right? You have your overarching summary and also the main summary. You save it, close it, and then upload it on this system, right? You, are, you can break it here and analyze it. So instead of you going through the long transcript and analyze, you have a summary. You can still listen to the videos, but you just focus on a summary and then make sense of that information. You see how if you ask ChatGPT simple questions, you'll be able to gather all the information that you need. There's one question asking about whether ChatGPT is accessible for ad academic thesis writing or article publication. ChatGPT just came last year, so it is taking some time for uh, people to accept. So in this case, you just have to find out from your school whether they accept that or not. But what you can do is that you have to be just being transparent. There's a lot of articles that have now been written People explaining how you can use chat GPT and how they use it to analyze their data. You can go online and see some of the articles. Whenever there's new technology, it takes time for people to accept, right? A long, long time ago, when you are analyzing qualitative data, you don't use a software. You have to download or you have to have everything on a piece of paper. And then you have to underline, highlight. Now, everybody is using not if you know everybody, most of people are using a software to help you to analyze your data. When the software came, people were reluctant to use because they think that the results might not be credible, right? But as time goes on, things become acceptable. I think it's all about being transparent. I don't advise you to use it to write your articles. It's unethical for you to do that. But if you are writing an article and you tell people that this article was maybe developed by ChatGPT, it's all about being transparent. If you are transparent, it improves the credibility of what you found. But if you are not transparent and you are hiding and using it and presenting as if you did it, now there are tools to find out to detect whether information is being generated by AI. So what I will always do is that use it in a way that is meaningful and use it in a transparent way. And the way of using it in this case is that you have a lot of data to analyze. It's so huge that you don't have time and resources to do that. So you are using a software like ChatGPT to help you to summarize the data before you make sense of it. The same way that you can use a software to automatically analyze your data for you, this software can automatically analyze your data. It's possible for you to do that. It's not about trying it out and see what you found and then use it and let people know if your school doesn't allow it, you shouldn't use it. So now you import the data. So how do you import the summary? Before you import, you have to close the document. So let me close the document here. And then you import the file that you want to. So now I have my file here. So you double click to open. So you have your data here, right? You have a summary. And then you just go through and then do the analysis. And so... This is what you're going to do for all the videos. You use the system to summarize and then you bring it to in vivo and you start the coding process. Remember that for this type, you can use any software. You just have to upload the document that you have saved. You, so you can use the deals, you can use Atlas TI, you can use MaskyDA. Any kind of qualitative software can use to analyze the document, right? So let me open what I've done so far so that you understand how the analysis went. So let me open one of the documents that I've done already. What I do is before you analyze, you first have to open the document. So you open one of the documents and then you go to code 
And here, this place will be empty for you to use. So what you have to do is you first have to bring your research question, right? Because you want to develop code to address your research question. So what I did was I created a container for my research question. So when you go back there, let's see, let me open the other one and let me demonstrate how to create containers for your research question. So let me open the one that I just closed. So I'm opening the other one that we just did and then I'm gonna show you how to create containers for your research question. And also in terms of how to use this software, uh, I will do a webinar one day to show you how to use this software. So don't be overwhelmed. I just want to show you what this software can do for you so that you really have an idea about what it does, right? But don't be overwhelmed if, if this is the first time of you seeing this software, right? First, you have to open the document that you want to analyze. Then you, you click on code. There will be empty space here. This is where you create your containers for your research questions. So we have two research questions. So what you have to do is you right click here, go to new, and as you can say RQ1, just to say research question one. And then instead of typing the whole research question, you can give a label to the research question. You can give it any kind of label just to remind you of the research question. So let, let's come up with a label. So the first research question about what are the strategies? So you can say strategies of amassing 130 million subscribers. It doesn't have a spell check, so you have to make sure you are typing them right. And then you can copy and paste the research question at the description there, just to remind you that this is for the research question. You are creating a container and labeling it to help you to remember that this container is for the research question one. And then you click on aggregate from, from children and you click on OK. So here you see how I have created a container for the first research question. You do the same thing for the second research question. You right click and click on new. And the second research question about this model. So you can say research question two, and then you can type maybe features because you are looking into the features of Mr. Beast business. model. And then you copy and paste the question here, just to remind you that it's for research question two. And then you check aggregate here and click on okay. So you see I've created containers, right? So what you have to do is that you simply go through the data and code it. So coding is all about assigning labels to the significant information that you have selected and put it under the respective research question. So let's assume that this one he's talking about, let, we are just making an assumption, right? He's talking about maybe creating unique videos. So what you're going to do is that if you think that this is addressing any of the research question, you go here, let's say it's addressing the first research question. You right click on this one and you click on new code and then type the label that is representing this significant information you have selected, and then check on aggregate coding from children. Before you click on okay, you can also give a description, but it's not required. You don't have to give any description. You click on okay, and you see that that information is now here, right? Then you drag and drop because here is zero. When you drop it, it's gonna be one. This means that you have dropped this into this container, right? under this first research question. So that's what you're gonna do. You go through, if this one is important, you think about what is this one talking about? Is it talking about focusing on doing quality videos? Then if it's that, I think it's addressing the first research question. So if that's the case, I right click here and then type focusing on doing quality videos and they click on aggregate and click on okay. And then you drag and drop. So that's what you're gonna do. You select, the ones that are important addressing the research question. And then you create container under that research question and then drag and drop. As you are going through, sometimes you feel like, okay, this information is addressing the first research question and it's part of this container and then you just drag and drop. So you go here. You always have to think about 
can I drop it in any code that I've created? If not, you create a new code. This is to show you that you can use NVivo to analyze your data that you have summarized and then to help you to address your research question that you have. Let me show you at the end how things will look like. You see that I have developed a lot of codes under each of the research questions. And then I will categorize the code, right? into teams. So after developing codes, you have to also think about, can I group them based on similarities, right? And what I do is that I first export all what I've coded and then put it on Word documents. And what I do is that I categorize them. I sort them based on the similarities. So I sort them based on how the codes are related. And based on that, I give them names or labels. And those labels will be addressing the research question at the same time, representing the information here. I don't want to go too into detail, but I just want you to know that there's a possibility that at the end of the day, you'll be able to develop themes to help you to address your research question that you have. And then as you can see here, let's go through the PowerPoint quickly and let me show you how the end product will be. As you can see here, I analyze it. You have to label your research question, extract relevant information from the data, develop code or assign based on the relevant information, and then you categorize and develop themes. And at the end, for the first research question, these are the codes that I developed. And then I categorize the codes and I came up with themes addressing my research question that I have. You see how I can now address my research question using all these apps and software. Look at the second research question. These are the three codes that I developed, and then I developed themes to address my second research question. So you see how we as researchers, we can work with existing technology, being transparent, and be able to generate themes to address your research question that you have. You may be struggling with time. You may be struggling with resources. But with the help of technology and AI, working with technology, you can see here that I didn't allow AI to develop themes for me. I told AI, AI, based on this transcript, can you summarize it for me? And then after the summary, can I look at the summary and extract information that I need to help me to address my research question? You can be innovative. After you even generated themes, you can even go back and say, okay, this one, it's saying that creating unique and quality videos. Let me go back to original video. Where did Mr. B say that in order to be successful, you have to create a unique and quality video. Let me listen to get more information. So you see how even doing this, it will help you to think about a specific area that you have to focus on in terms of the big data that you are collected. You can further go into detail and analyze the original data based on this information. Or you can take some extracts as you are presenting your findings that I want to talk about, right? As you are presenting your findings, you can quote him by using original videos to quote, to support all these themes. So you see how you can systematically work with existing technology to help you to address your research question and also make sense of your data. And this is the skill that I want you to acquire. This is a skill that I want you to know. So at the end of the day, you'll be able to use it in your research, your workplace. You can easily do research at your workplace. Look at videos, transcribe, or extract data. Use ChatGPT to summarize this for you and then do the coding yourself. And then you have your themes. So you see how it is becoming so interesting and easy if you are transparent in this process. I do consultations. So if you want any detailed information about your research, and maybe more information about how to use chat DPT and other things, you can consult me and I'll be happy to address. I have also my online courses there. If you want to get basic understanding of qualitative research, how to analyze your data, how to write your chapter um, three in terms of uh, methodology, you can also take my course. It will be helpful for you. I have a book called Step-by-Step -Step Guide to Qualitative Coding. 
if you get access to it, that will be very helpful, especially if you are new to qualitative analysis. And also if you are doing a phenomenological study, this book will be so helpful for you. This is my contact. Thank you everyone and bye for now.